basically going to be about the truth about dehydration and sodium balance and endurance sports. Um, a little background about me. I've been in the industry since 1999. Doesn't seem like that long, but it obviously is a really long time. Some of you guys I know, some I don't. My working history is I was with Equinox for a very long time. Worked with Paul Juris for a long time. Um, long story short, I'm no longer with Equinox. I work at a private club on the Upper East Side called the Fitness Cell, where I train clientele one-on-one -on -one in the weight room. But four years ago, I also launched a triathlon coaching business, an endurance sports coaching business called the Everyday Triathlete, where we basically focus obviously on triathletes, but we also work with standalone cyclists and marathon runners, focusing mostly on the longer distance stuff. So we're looking at mainly half Ironman, Ironman athletes, half marathon, up to ultra distance, whatever floats the guy's boat or girl's boat. Um, that's not to say that we exclude the shorter distances. We do work with first timers, people running a 5K for the first time as well. Um, endurance sports is endurance sports. So as far as you can go is endurance. All right, and now obviously with all the, the new mode of you know, the Spartan races and Tough Mudders, obviously we're branching into those as well. Um, mountain biking, everything. So I obviously read a lot of periodicals like everybody else. And, you know, you're flooded with advertisements. You're flooded with, you know, reviews of this new product and that product. And, you know, it's always hydration, 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 sodium pills. My client's asking me, well, should I be taking salt? I was cramping up. I need to take salt. How much water should I drink? Should I be drinking 40 ounces of water an hour? I'm losing body weight when I'm when I'm going out for a run, I come back, I'm two pounds lighter. Should I be drinking more while I'm running? You have me going out for a two hour run. How am I supposed to carry the water with me? Should I buy one of these fuel belts? Should I stop at a bodega? So all these things about the hydration just kept coming up and coming up that, you know, I just started looking into it. What, what's the story? You know, I go out for a run. I run a marathon. I don't have a sip of water. I'm passing every water station just because I'm not thirsty. I'm running a marathon with my wife in Burlington a couple of years ago. Every water station we get to, she's running, she's running through, grabbing water, drinking, and I'm just in the middle of the road, trotting along with her. And she's like, don't you want anything? I'm like, no, I'm all right. We keep going and going. She's like, are you going to drink anything? I was like, I don't know, maybe. If I get thirsty, I'll be fine. So why is it that I have this urge not to drink and these other people, everybody else, has this urge to drink? So, you know, instead of just blindly following everybody else, I started looking into it as well. And Declan's going to start doing my thing. All right. Albert Einstein, it's a close relative of mine. No, it's just, uh, not at all. Um, but he has a statement that has always stuck with me, um, and that a man should look for what is, or female, should look for what is, not what he thinks should be, all right? And I think a lot of times what happens is we start just taking things as truth. It's written down or it's presented to you, and that's just it. It's truth, right? You guys are all sitting here listening to me. Who the heck am I? Some of you guys will walk out of here believing me blindly. This guy makes perfect sense. Some of you guys will question me. I hope, hopefully you question me. But the idea is everything that I'm going to say, I'm not responsible for any of it. I didn't do any of these studies. Everything I'm going to present to you has been studied by somebody else. I just discovered it because I was looking for what is, not simply looking for what should be. All right. The person I looked to when I was looking for these answers is Tim Noakes. Um, Tim, Tim Noakes is in the running realm probably the same kind of level as a Mel Sif is in the strength training realm, all right, who wrote Super Training, which I don't think any of us could probably really understand if we read it or tried to read it, all right. The first book that Tim Noakes really came out with was actually Lore of Running, all right. It's now in its fourth edition. It's very much a Super Training kind of book, and anybody in the industry will tell you that this is the book about running. If you have a question about what the human body goes through while running, the energy systems, muscles involved, this is the guy. This is also the guy 
that will argue that endurance athletes aren't 60% slow twitch and 40% fast twitch. This is a guy that says, you know what, when those studies were taken, we're in the 70s. And the marathon runners in the 70s, when they tested them, were predominantly slow twitch type runners. And the mid-distance runners, the guys running the mile, were 50-50. And the sprinters were predominantly fast twitch and not as much slow twitch. Well, he's also the guy that said, what was the money like in the 70s? Where were the athletes in track and field making money? They weren't making it running the marathon. They were making it trying to break the, the mile record. So were the greatest athletes running the marathon or were the greatest athletes 50-50, slow twitch, fast twitch, running the mile? If that test was redone now, where the money's now in the marathons, what would that test show us? That's what Tim Noakes does. That's what he studies. That's what Lore of Running presents. All right? He just came out with a new book about a year ago called Waterlogged, which is the serious problem of overhydration in endurance sports. So he looked at hydration in endurance sports. All right, this is a man who's authored or co-authored 250 studies, 50 of which looked directly at the role of hydration and electrolytes in sports and performance. He doesn't own a sports drink company. He doesn't own any company. The guy is just a professor at a university and a scientist. He's not making any money off anything. He's certainly not making any money off of his books because Waterlog doesn't sell them all that great. Um, he's also an avid marathoner, 70 plus marathons and ultra. So this is a guy that not only you know, looks at stuff from a scientific standpoint, but also looks at it as a practitioner as well. All right, how many people in here are certified by ACSM, an SCA, any accredited at some point, all of us were. All right, whether we still are or not, that's a different story. All right, now these list of symptoms for dehydration were taken directly, verbatim, out of the accredited national certification, which I am not going to name, because they might get mad at me later on. Muscle cramps. You dehydrated, you're getting cramps. Okay. Thirst. You become dehydrated, you're gonna get weak. You're gonna get irritable. Your performance is going to be reduced. You'll probably end up with a headache. You'll get nauseous. You'll get fatigued. You'll get dizzy. You'll get confused. It's, yeah. Like, do not get dehydrated. Whatever you do, all these things are going to happen. All right. What I can say to you is that this list of symptoms is going to get narrowed down. We're going to whittle down through this. All right. And we're going to whittle through this not by just saying it's yes or no, but we're going to whittle through this by saying this is how the body works. This is what science shows us, okay? On to the next one. As a coach and in the gym, these are probably the five bullet points that I hear the most from either the client asking a trainer or the trainer actually responding this back to a clientele, all right? And let me know if these sound just completely wrong to you guys or if you've already said these yourself, all right? In order to ensure optimal performance or survive endurance events, one must replace all lost fluids. Check your sweat rate. Before you go for a run, weigh yourself. Come back from a run, weigh yourself. What'd you lose, two pounds? Start drinking, get that two pounds back in you. All right, common, right? We guys, come on, we read this every month in any running magazine, right? We must drink water in order to prevent heat illness during extremely hot conditions. It's hot as heck outside. You're going for a run, make sure you take a water bottle with you. Drink, is there water fountains on the way? Really hot outside. Stay cool, guys. You know, keep drinking. Hot practice today, guys. A lot of water out there. I want you extra water breaks today. Don't want you guys to overheat. Drink a lot of water. Right? Ever since I was fourth grade, I heard that. We need to supplement with sodium to complete long distance endure events, especially the salty sweater. Needs even more. You get done with your run, you got that white crust all over your clothes, which I always do. It's crusted down the side of your face. 
Oh, and you cramp, you definitely need sodium pills. Start popping the sodium pills left and right. That's in any ad that you guys open up any magazine when you get home, trust me. Sodium supplementation stops and prevents exercise associated muscle cramping. Cramping, lack sodium. Just need sodium pills. You won't cramp in your next race. Okay. The frequency and color of my urine will tell me when, whether or not I am adequately hydrated. Dark pee, drink more water. You're not peeing, drink more water. All right? These are all things that I know you guys have either said, heard, or read in the last month. Travis. If you're thirsty, it's too late. I didn't even put that one in there, because we're in the, but that's definitely, right? If you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated. There's actually a little bit of truth to that one. All right, so let's go on to the next. So to start talking about these symptoms and start talking about these myths that we just saw, not to ruin the, the surprise there, but obviously those are all gonna be proven to be not true. What we have to first talk about is the body. All right, how does our body actually process water? Dehydration is obviously unhydrating. So to avoid dehydration, we need to hydrate, right? It just makes perfect sense. So let's walk through how, th how this actually happens. The origin of our need to drink starts in our subconscious brain, hypothalamus, all right? That activates our brain, and our conscious brain then starts to s give us symptoms of thirst. Right? So it's like, all right, subconsciously, we're becoming thirsty. Brain says to the other part of the brain, listen, start telling this idiot to drink something. All right? In response, we start to seek out water. I'm thirsty. What do I do? Oh, there's my cup over there. I'm going to go, I'm going to get a drink of water. Pretty simple, right? How many people have animals, dogs, cats? You guys sitting around one day watching TV, all of a sudden a dog stands up, walks over and starts drinking out of the dog bowl. No one told him to go take a drink. He just realized he was thirsty. He wasn't bored. He's bored all day. He just lays around. Something told him he's thirsty. Go ahead, Declan. As a fluid, right, so we go over, get a drink, throw it down my, my mouth here. As a fluid passes through the stomach into the upper bowels, right? So it goes through the stomach, starts entering into the bowel system. Once it starts to enter in that bowel system, it, it receives excretion from your liver and your pancreas, okay? What it's doing at that point in time is it's actually adding in electrolytes into that fluid that you just drank, all right? Predominantly sodium. And what this does is it increases the concentration of sodium in that solution increasing the rate at which the fluid can actually be absorbed across the intestinal wall into your system, okay? So basically fluid comes out of my stomach, we add sodium to it and other electrolytes, potassium and the others, so that way we get it to a certain ratio so it can be absorbed into the body, all right? So basically it does not matter if I'm drinking water or if I'm drinking an electrolyte drink. When it leaves my stomach and hits that portion of the liver and pancreas secretion, all fluid will have the same exact ratio. All right? Doesn't matter if that drink has electrolytes in it or not. It will have the same once it passes past your stomach. Okay? However, what they did find was that the presence of carbohydrates in drink does actually add to the the speediness of the absorption rate. So if that liquid does have carbohydrate in it, like a Gatorade, compared to a water, the carbohydrate in the Gatorade will help speed up the absorption rate. So that water will get into the system a little bit faster. Okay? Go ahead. Once the water is absorbed into the, into the body, it basically enters the vein. And this is basically it becomes part of the extracellular fluid, all right? So the water basically goes into your blood and goes into the rest of your body outside of the cells, 